So I was sitting in my cubicle today and I realized ever since I started working, um, every single day of my life has been worse than the day before it. So that means that every single day that you see me, that's on the worst day of my life. What about today? Is today the worst day of your life? Yeah. Wow, that's messed up. Hey everyone. I saw a video recently that I'm going to play in a second that influenced the video that I'm making now. So here it is. In the United States, 99% of people live in areas that meet standards for light pollution. And we've got one person to thank for that. Thomas Alva Edison. Edison thought sleep was lazy, unhealthy, or inefficient, even though he took several naps a day. But despite that hypocrisy, his work more, sleep less view changed our world forever. Illuminated night became a sign of economic progress, that humankind was no longer at the mercy of nature's clock, or so we thought. Artificial light can have serious effects on our sleep cycle. When we're exposed to bright light at night, our brain doesn't know better than to think the sun is shining. This can be very confusing, preventing the release of melatonin and the onset of sleep. Depression, heart disease, diabetes, and cancer have all been linked to chronic overexposure to artificial light. This really bothers me for more reasons than were presented in this video. Now, this topic of working and working and working and working and the line between personal and work lives blurring is something that I've experienced in my private life and that I have seen many, many times in the lives of people I know and commingle with. The problem here is that because there are so many people who are out of work and because the market is so competitive, people are willing to go to these ridiculous extremes in order to keep up with other businesses. So, back in the day, for example, when cell phones were just becoming popular in the early 2000s, nobody had email on their phone, or very few people did. Then Blackberries came out, and people had email on their phones. Then it became cheaper, the technology became cheaper, so more people got smartphones, and then it became the norm that everyone had to be connected to their fucking work emails on their phones. That's just kind of the norm. If you have, and, and if, even if you don't have email coming directly to your phone, there are plenty of applications like LogMeIn that have mobile applications or mobile versions where you can check your work email or other things at work. So you're at a, say you're at an office and you have coworkers who want to get ahead. What do they do? Well, they check emails at all hours. First of all, they get emails connected directly to their phones, which they can do now. They check emails at all hours, respond to emails at all hours, and that impresses the boss. So what happens? The boss expects everyone to do that, and it becomes the new norm. I am fiercely protective of my private life, and my God, does this shit bother me. I refuse. I, I have a an old shitty $25 cell phone that I picked up used somewhere and I have it for emergencies I refuse I refuse to get a smartphone for this very reason I don't even want there to be a fucking I, I don't want to help the corporate world at all in purchasing this device myself because what am I gonna do check Facebook while I take a shit and I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have someone tell me. Well, hey, you have this phone, so you can get uh, emails hooked up. And blah, blah, blah. no, 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 no. And I just. I want to say fuck you to the people who made this popular. Fuck you to you to these people who don't value family life. Fuck you to the people who are willing to check email 24 hours a day, miss sleep, work seven days a week. Fuck you people. Fuck you people, because you don't know what you're doing. I am a stickler for hard work. I work six or seven days a week, mostly because I have this massive fucking government tax burden. But I am no stranger to hard work. I, have a, I actually have a manual labor job on weekends because I actually enjoy working hard. But when I'm out 
I'm out. I am punched the fuck out. I am gone. I don't even want to be a thought in terms of, well, let's call him up and, and whatever. Do, I don't even have to finish that sentence. Let's call him up. No, 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 no. Don't call me up. I'm gone. I'm done. But unfortunately, people are willing to go way, way, way beyond that. So then everybody's expected to do that. And then the corporation downsizes. And guess what? You have to do you and your coworkers' work because you were lucky enough not to get fucking fired. So <laughs> you have email on your phone and you have to check your phone. You have to work more and you have to work off the clock. And we're only going to pay you for 40 hours, but we're going to intimidate you by threatening that you're going to lose your fucking job. Of course, we're not going to write this down, and we're not going to explicitly say it. We'll, we'll just imply it in our conversation, so, yeah. So the new norm is just, fuck you. So I have, rather than just my ranting, I've, I also, what inspired me for this is I saw another article, and it's Sunday night, it's it, the, uh, premise of the article, Sunday night is the new Monday morning. I'll post the link to this below. <laughs> Sunday's Mondayization can be seen in the changing email patterns observed by Alexander Moore, the founder of Boomerang, a subscription service that allows users to send emails hours or days after they were written. Over the past five years, Sunday night has gone from our third most common night for writing emails to be sent later, behind Monday and Tuesday nights, to the most common. It looks like Thursday and Friday nights are the new weekend, he emailed. Now, by many accounts, Sunday night has become the new Monday morning, and here's the fucking kicker. In 2014, 30% of workers polled by Gallup said their employers generally expect them to check their emails and stay in touch remotely outside of normal business hours. Fuck you! Fuck you! Why are people doing this? Why are people falling for this? This... This is just, it pisses me off because it is becoming the new norm. I'm old enough to remember when this type of shit wouldn't, no one would have tolerated this type of thing. People would have simply refused, but now, well, we got 92 million Americans out of work. So guess what? Fuck you, check your email on Sundays. And speaking of, I found another article that cite studies that Americans work more than ever. And part of the reason being, I'm not talking about the people who are out of work. Okay? The people who are left, who have to, have to, say, have to say, man, gee, sure, I sure am lucky to still have a goddamn job. The people who are left over have to be happy about that, and they have to work more. So if you're, if you're, if the company you work in is downsized, and you're still there, don't think that, you, oh, wow, whew, man, my job didn't get cut. What you're going to have to do is more work, and probably for either less compensation or the same compensation. Actually, technically, the same is less, because if you have to do more for the same, then you're making less for doing more. So, here's an excerpt from that. Measuring past the punch clock. That's what Shore's book, Shore's an author, tries to do, as well as two recent releases, The White Collar Sweatshop by Jill Andresky Frazier and The Morning L Life by Joanne B. Chuilia. The authors all find evidence that many Americans are overstressed and overworked in trends that are not necessarily measured with a punch clock. Trends such as road rage, workplace shootings, the rising number of children in daycare, and increasing demands for after-school activities to occupy children whose parents are too busy or still at work. That it's just so fucked up. There's I, I I thought life well like we have hit if you're alive, if you're listening to this fucking me if you're listening to me bitching, life you, you hit the lottery in terms of work. Or I mean I'm sorry, in terms of existence. Because trillions and quadrillions and quintillions of people never will. You're here. You were one of the, I guess you can call yourself one of the lucky ones because you're fucking up, breathing, whatever. The, the chances of actually existing, it, it, it's pretty small. So you would think that with that, life should be a celebration. You, that's what you think. But it's not. It's just massive amounts of stress and work. Now, this is not a video. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. This, is not a, this video is not to demonize business owners because... Without businesses, without rich people, it would be very difficult to have jobs. I, I, I hate to say it, but uh, people who can 
open businesses are the ones who are going to create jobs. And, well, actually, to, to go back even further, the only reason that that has to happen is because of the industrialization and hyper-exploitation of resources in this modern economy. But I, I'm not here to bastardize and demonize business owners. The problem I'm having is with the employees who are willing to do this shit, who are willing to check their emails when they're not being paid to do so, who are willing to accept phone calls from work when they're not being paid to do so, who are willing to neglect themselves, their health, and their fucking families to try to get ahead a little bit at work. You are fucking assholes. You are cocksucking, worthless pieces of shit. Because you don't understand that life is not about fucking work. Life is supposed to be about enjoying yourself as much as you can. Of course, people have to work. Even if I didn't have a tax burden, I'd have to work. This is not an anti-work video either. It's having a fucking reasonable balance between work and life. And fuck you if you think that, that people should be working seven days a week, checking their emails at night, stressing out about work when they're at home. Fuck you. All this stuff leads to depression, cancer, heart disease, diabetes. It's leading to workplace violence. We've seen how many fucking times, I, I can't, I swear, I can't turn on the radio during the week and not hear about a fucking workplace shooting because that's what's happening. People get so overstressed and they're not interested in self-examination or therapy. So what happens? They go and they shoot all their fucking coworkers. This has to stop. Like, life is not supposed to be like this. We're not supposed to be trapped in little cubicles. Moving around arbitrations. I, I mean, that, that's, it's just crazy. Like, if I have to do this, I'm not going to do it on Sunday night. I'm not going to do it when I'm not at work. I'm going to go to work, I'm going to give it my all, and then I'm going to go home and leave it in the office. Or leave it on the trucks. So, I I'm going to wrap it up now, but... God damn it. I mean, if your boss tells you to do this shit, I mean, even if you have to temporarily, go get another fucking job. Don't put up with this bullshit. Don't do it. Because we're creating a culture of people who, who just have no concept of family and fun, and downtime, and relaxation. So, I, I could not sum it up better than Peter Gibbons from Office Space, so thank you for listening. The thing is, Bob, it's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. Don't, don't care? It's a problem of motivation, all right? Now, if I work my ass off and Initech ships a few extra units, I don't see another dime. So where's the motivation? Now, here's something else, Bob. I have eight different bosses right now. Uh, beg your pardon? Eight bosses. Eight? Eight, Bob. So that means that when I make a mistake, I have eight different people coming by to tell me about it. That's my only real motivation, is not to be hassled. That and the fear of losing my job. But you know, Bob, that'll only make someone work just hard enough not to get fired. Would you bear with me for just a second, please? OK. What if, and believe me, this is so <laughs> hypothetical. But what if you were offered some kind of a stock option equity sharing program? Would that do anything for you? I don't know, I guess. Listen, I'm going to go. Uh, it's been really nice talking to both of you guys. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah, the pleasure's you. all on this side yes. of the table, trust me. Good luck with your layoffs, all right? I hope your firings go really well. Okay. Thanks a lot. Great. Yeah.